So today I thought I'd just do a bit different video rather than put my ugly mug on the <laughs> on the on the video. Let's just watch Ohio burn uh, and talk about things. Um, you know, we still don't know why the train der derailed. Um, Gay Pete uh, doesn't even seem to want to uh, visit the uh, area. There's three people that I think, well, four actually. Um, uh, we, we definitely want the uh, governor of Ohio, uh, John Shapiro, and uh, of course, uh, Pennsylvania, Mike Devine. Uh, they, they should both go to jail. They were two, we're learning who approved this uh, travesty by uh, allowing uh, Northrop Southern, Southern to burn the uh, chemicals into the air and basically destroy uh, and create Chernobyl uh, in Ohio. Um, and of course, the Biden administration. Uh, it, it, if you really believe that the Environmental Protection Agency <laughs> is the Environmental Protection Agency, I think we need to lab relabel that the Environmental Destruction Agency uh, under the uh, w uh, well, let's see, what did I call them? The um, Eco Terrorist uh, Warmongering Democrats. That's that's what we need to call it. We need to call it the Environmental Destruction Agency. Uh, eco-terrorist, uh, warmongering Democrats uh, in Washington, D.C. So those are the three places that, um, that uh, destroyed, uh, well, Ohio. And by the way, this is close to Pennsylvania, so Pennsylvania is going to suffer too. And, uh, you know, I want to point out something. Uh, this is what you get when you elect stupid people, okay? And in Pennsylvania, they elected a zombie and a dead man. Um, and, of course, their governors are, are terrible. And, uh, and so just... Yesterday, I was at the VFW, and I was talking to some New York New Yorkers. And I said, man, I said, how the hell did Kathy Hochul get elected <laughs> I mean, in, in New York? <laughs> That's the dumbest woman I've ever seen. And they were like, well, who knows politics? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We can't talk about politics. We can't talk about politics. I said, what? I mean, you're from New York. Don't you care? Don't you have some friends up there, some relatives? Or, you know, I mean... Uh, we, we, we don't we don't care about that type of thing. Well, guess what, people? You better care. Look at all these people that just lost everything. Now, most of these people voted for Trump, so I do give them credit. Um, this wasn't their fault. They uh, this is a vastly um, Republican area. Maybe that's why it got destroyed. Who knows? Let's uh, let's get into another conspiracy theory that will probably be proven wrong. Um, the, uh, so let's, uh, let's just kind of go down the, um, the, 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 the list here, but, you know, I do find it, uh, interesting that the train was destroyed in an area where Bill Gates doesn't own the farmland. China doesn't own the farmland. These was largely owned by, uh, Ohio and, uh, Pennsylvanians, uh, Republican voters, uh, and imagine that uh, we've destroyed this entire area under the orders of, uh, you know, the Pennsylvania um, Democrat governor and in uh, the Ohio governor and, of course, the Biden administration. So make of that what you will, what you will. Isn't it kind of weird that uh, and then and then to, to blow the train up <laughs> after the fact. Oh my God, this is this is just a nightmare. I made my video yesterday. I encourage you to watch that. I was trying to give Ohio some advice uh, on how to deal with these chemicals because I know they got to get back to their their residents and their houses and how to do it safely and get your stuff out. I'm I'm sorry, your land. Uh, this is Chernobyl. You, you're not going to be able to go home anytime soon. Certainly, don't drink the water. Holy shit! By the way, I missed. Uh, uh, pronounced yesterday i said the water had gone all the way to louisiana i meant louisville kentucky okay louisville kentucky is where they're testing the water right now um so let's just get into um by the way i you know i did want to uh point out that uh you know it's it's kind of funny now that i mean it's not funny nothing's funny about this but you know, NATO picked the wrong war <laughs> when they wanted to go up against Russia, because now we know that NATO is running out of ammunition. And I say NATO, it's not Ukraine. This isn't about Ukraine. It has nothing to do with Ukraine. This was NATO fighting Russia. And they're going to continue to fight Russia, it sounds like. They're still going down that route. Um, so Colonel McGregor today, he came out and he said that the, I don't know how he gets his facts. I guess he's got a lot of, he said he talked to a guy in uh, Russia uh, the other day, and uh, Russia's gearing up for 30 months of war with NATO. 
So they, they do believe that NATO is going to uh, basically come in an all-out offensive against... Uh, let, let, me, uh, let me cut that off. There we go. Sorry. Sorry about that. So he, he did feel that, uh, well, Russia feels that, you know, that NATO is going to come in with everything they got. Uh, and so they're ready to fight. So they, they, they still got their um, industry on a huge 24-hour production. Um, and, you know, that's, that's something that I wanted to talk about was uh, industry uh, or wartime industry. You know, one thing that I think that, you know, when all this settles down and if we're all, we're, if we're all still alive and we haven't gone to global thermal nuclear war, I do think we need to restructure the United States. Um, you know, one thing about Russia is they kept the uh, military industry under state control. Now, I'm, I certainly don't want the government in control of anything, uh, but the U.S. Constitution says that the, uh, the job of the federal government is to provide for the common defense. So, you know, I'm, I was thinking about it, and I said, well, you know what, the, the defense industry, rather than being a for-profit industry that uh, uh, basically bribes government officials and, and, and does, you know, rides herd and, and, and dictates policy, I think that the U.S. government should take over the defense industry, just like Russia has, and make that a state-run industry because they're providing for the common defense. And so what the reason why Russia is able to produce the amount of weapons that they have, and these, these are some points that I want you to understand, okay, the way, uh, way Russia conducts their, their, their industry. All right, so during World War II, I mean, it was incredible. They actually picked up their defense industry and moved it when the Germans came in. I don't even know how that's possible. I mean, I someday I need to read a book or, or, or try to understand. Um, but they've always kept their military industry, uh, even though after the, you know, the Cold War ended, after the Soviet Union ended, Russia never dismantled its industry. They they just they kept because you got to remember all of those those uh, lines, all of the, uh, the 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 equipment. It all has to stay oiled. It all has to stay uh, capable of uh, being able to produce munitions, being able to produce rockets, being able to produce everything. Now you got to keep a in peacetime. You got to keep a small portion of that industry rocking, and especially you know. Russia's selling weapons around the world. The United States selling weapons around the world. Uh, but Russia, what they did was they kept all of their industry uh, maintained. Now, were they using it? No, they were using a very, very small percentage. And then the other thing is you got to have people trained uh, to be able to use the equipment to manufacture the weapons. And what Russia does is they take uh, their citizens and they rotate them into the industry. And uh, it's still kind of like... You know, this is something I think we need to do in the United States. You know, every United States citizen should be required to provide service to the nation, okay, to make them appreciate the country, okay, whether it's military service or service in a fire department or whatever. Uh, and, and, and in this case, I mean, it could just be American citizens going to work in a factory for a certain period of time to learn how to use the equipment and maintain your, your industrial capacity to be able to produce weapons. Because, see, if it's a for-profit industry, you're only going to produce the expensive shit. You're going to produce F-35 planes that's going to make you a gazillion dollars. You're going to produce uh, HIMARS, uh, you know, the, the, the rockets, you know, you're going to produce. So this is why uh, NATO's running out of, well, and uh, is running out of munitions. And so this war should be over. Well, I mean, it, it, obviously Russia feels that, you know, NATO is going to come across with everything they got left because they're not going to give up on this. The globalists, the uh, lunatics, the, the Biden administration, the war, the uh, eco-terrorist warmongering Democrats are going to continue to fight this thing. But let's get into the other news here. Uh, I wanted to point this out. Uh, and, and this was a statistic that I got today from McGregor. You know that 14,000 people were killed in the Donbass region by Ukrainian shelling from 2014 to 2022. That's 14,000 people that died. Now imagine if, if uh, Mexico was shelling the shit out of Texas from 2014 to 2022 and killed 14,000 Texans. How would you feel about that, huh? How, how, as a Texan, wouldn't you think that it'd be time to put an end to this whole thing? And that's what this whole invasion was about. 
So um, anyway, we'll see. Uh, but uh, I do like the community service idea. I do think that it would do our youth good to uh, serve in some capacity to the nation, uh, either just working in a factory for a brief period of time, making munitions, uh, and keep our, our military industry uh, state-run, get it out of the hands of Raytheon, uh, uh, Northrop Grumman, uh, all the big names, and, uh, and just, anyway, and provide for the common defense. That's just my idea. Oh, James Clapper. <laughs> He's come out. You know them 15, what, what 50, 51 uh, 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 officials that, uh, that signed on to that stupid letter uh, that, that Joe Biden, I mean, uh, Hunter Biden's laptop wasn't real. Oh, yeah, yeah, we remember that now, don't we? Uh, that was that was freaking stupid. Well, now he's come out and he says, well, no, no, they, they mis misinterpreted what I said. You know, I said that it could be uh, uh, disinform Russian disinformation, and uh, they misquoted me. <laughs> he's covering his ass because the Republican uh, House is, well, they're not going to do anything. I mean, the guy will never go to jail. I mean, I don't even know what he's worried about, but, you know, who knows? Uh, this is the latest uh, Russia uh, clips. Um, let's see. I wanted to get, uh, uh, we'll get into a couple of these. Um, uh, well, yeah, yeah, let's see, EPA, uh, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't try, and that's another thing, all the people in Ohio, I mean, our, our distrust in our government's so bad, they're not trusting anything that the EPA has said, I certainly wouldn't either, I mean, I, that was my, what my um, uh, video was all about yesterday, um, I mean, after all the CIA psyops with the, the whole uh, COVID nightmare, uh, the whole uh, mask thing, the whole, uh, all the lies that we've been told in the last three years, it's just been unbelievable. And I guess there's still a whole 50% of the United States that still believes all this shit when they, uh, it just blows my mind. Uh, let's see. Um, you know, one thing I thought about today was, you know, wouldn't it be a good idea maybe to, for us as citizens to start buying up like Geiger counters? I mean, I, I, if, it, if, if Russia's right, and they're building up for a 30-month conflict with NATO, um, who knows when, when the nuclear trigger might go off. I mean, maybe we're going to need things like Geiger counters. And I showed you my chemical warfare suit. I encourage you to get one. Um, so, you know, I guess uh, that, that's, that would be important. By the way, the other, the other thing I wanted to point out is even though the, uh, the Environmental Destruction Agency is in Ohio. <laughs> Where is the FBI? I guess they're hunting down Trump supporters uh, to throw them all in jail. Uh, so that, that's probably where the FBI is. I haven't seen anything about what caused the derailment yet. Have you? Let me know in the comment below if you've seen anything about that. Um, so, you know, is the other thing that I'm noticing is it just seems like a lot of our infrastructure is getting destroyed. It seems to be intentional to me. I cannot believe that, uh, that you know, the, the Democrats aren't in cahoots with China in destroying our um, infrastructure. Because, I mean, I, there's been other train derailments, and uh, I, didn't, I didn't go through the whole list of them. I mean, uh, and then we got this, this truck in Arizona. <laughs> Holy shit. It was filled with uh, nitric acid. And uh, it... it somehow turned over and uh, is, is contaminating Arizona. I mean, is this like a, a controlled destruction of the United States? It sure does appear that way. I, you know, maybe Biden's just in the pocket of China and uh, is, is they're working together to destroy the United States from within. I just can't believe the Pentagon's going along with it. I don't, I don't get it. Uh, I, cause it, where are they going to go? I guess, well, they might all go live in China and China's going to give them uh, pina coladas for the rest of her life. I, it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, the other thing that I thought about today was um, it, and a different angle on the uh, rail accident. You know, now you know that the Democrats pretend that they are for the unions. Well, you know, when they took down the Keystone Pipeline, uh, they just told the union to go fuck itself. <laughs> I mean, they told it. They told all them union members, "Hey, thanks for voting Democrat, but you know what? You got no job no more, you stupid fucks." Oh my God! So that was that was pretty impressive. I mean, what they did there, and so then the the railroad unions, uh, I think they voted Democrat, 
And then they told them to go fuck themselves because they, they, they basically the railroads. I mean, remember the, the strike and they were trying to get like one day of sick leave and the Democrats told them, go screw yourselves. I, it, it's kind of like it's, it's like, please, God, let me have another, you know, I, spank me, please spank me, spank me again. And then the, and then these stupid people vote Democrat over and over and over again. Holy moly. I, I you know, I just I don't get it. And, uh, and then, of course, you know, here I am at the just the VFW, you know, hanging out. And, you know, I just want to talk about things that I think are important, uh, like what you know, up in New Hampshire. Let's let's not send our National Guard anymore without a vote by Congress. And, uh, and, and I said, well, you know, shouldn't we as, a, as, a, as an institution, you know, fight for this? Well, it's politics. We don't want to get into politics. Well, guess what? Politics is coming for you one way or the other, buddy. One way or the other. So that's it for today's video. Let's uh, let's watch uh, the latest uh, progress of the special military operation. Uh, this is, uh, I tell you what, I, I who is this guy? Dang on it. Well, I guess we'll we'll get his name here in just a minute. So uh, and I, I I just I watch these every day because it's a travesty what's taking place in Ukraine uh, under NATO. Uh, and of course we do, you know, the good news is it's not, or the good news or bad news, whichever way you want to look at it, it's not just Ukrainians that are dying. There's a lot of mercenaries from NATO that are over there dying too. A lot of stupid people. I mean, I don't know why they want to, um, can fight Russia, but, um, cause we could end this thing to tomorrow. All we got to do is tell Russia, uh, well, we'll, we will sit down with you without conditions because Russia is not going to sit down at the peace table unless it's unconditional. And that's that's where we were with Japan after World War II. Let's 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 watch the latest special operations report. Oops, sorry. All military operation in the Kupiansk direction, Army Aviation and Artillery of the Zapad Group of Forces inflicted a fire damage on manpower and military equipment of the 14th Mechanized Brigade and the 103rd Territorial Defense Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine close to Dvorechne and Kotlerovka of Kharkov region. In addition, eight sabotage and reconnaissance groups of the Armed Forces of Ukraine were destroyed near Krochmalnoye, Masutovka, Pershotravnivoye, Tinkovka in Kharkov region and Novoselovskoye of Lugansk People's Republic. Total enemy casualties in the day in this direction amounted to up to 100 Ukrainian servicemen killed and wounded, two armored combat vehicles, four vehicles and one B-30 howitzer, one ammunition depot of the 113th Territorial Defense Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces has been destroyed near Veteranarnoye of Kharkov region. In the Krasny Liman direction, army aviation strikes and artillery fire of the center group of forces hit units of the 67th, the 92nd, mechanized and the 25th Airborne Brigades of the Ukrainian Armed Forces in the areas of Chervona and Dibrova, Stelmakovka of Lugansk People's Republic and Yampolovka of Donetsk People's Republic. Up to 65 Ukrainian servicemen, one infantry fighting vehicle, two armored combat vehicles, three vehicles, two Gwazdika self-propelled howitzers and one Guatemal Res have been destroyed during the day. In the Donetsk direction, up to 190 Ukrainian troops, two infantry fighting vehicles, one armored personnel carrier, three motor vehicles, one stubby howitzer and one US made M777 artillery system have been neutralized during the day by the U group of forces offensive and artillery fire. In the south Donetsk and Zaporozhye directions, artillery and heavy flamethrower systems of the Vostok group of forces hit Ukrainian armed forces in the areas of Oblidar and Novoselka of Donetsk People's Republic. The enemy's losses included over 60 Ukrainian troops, two tanks, four infantry fighting vehicles, two armored combat vehicles, D-20 and D-30 howitzers, as well as Gwazdika self-propelled howitzer in these directions. In the Kherson direction, one Gwazdika self-propelled howitzer and one D-30 howitzer have been destroyed during the day as part of counter battery warfare operation. Army aviation, missile troops and artillery of the armed forces of the Russian Federation have neutralized 87 Ukrainian artillery units at their firing positions, manpower and military equipment in 112 areas. Air Defense Forces have shot down 8 HIMARS projectiles and destroyed 11 Ukrainian unmanned aerial vehicles close to Sofiyevka, Popovka, Golikovo, Novokrasnyanka, Kremennaya, Zhitlovka and Chervonopopovka in Lugansk People's Republic. In total, 385 airplanes and 208 helicopters. Okay, I'll always read this myself. 
385 airplanes, 208 helicopters, 3,132 unmanned aerial vehicles, 404 air defense missile systems, 7,875 tanks and other armored fighting vehicles, 1,020 multiple rocket launchers, 4,101 field artillery cannons and mortars, and 8,388 special military motor vehicles. Well, we wonder why NATO is running out of equipment, huh? <laughs> Those numbers are, uh, I, I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I, I used to lose sleep at night over this, but it, it, you kind of grow numb to the whole thing when you just report on it day after day, and, and it just seems like nobody cares. I don't get it. And, and, and yeah, I guess Biden walks around and, and you know, a, a drunken or a, probably a drugged stupor. They probably pump so many drugs into him to, 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 to enable him to, to move around. Holy moly. Well, that's it. Uh, I did want to get the, there was one more video. Um, might have been this one. Oh, yeah, this, this, is, this is the one. Uh, and so this is what they feel in Russia, just real quick. This is today. Operation. Today, the U.S. and their satellites are carrying an all-round hybrid war that they, hadn't been, that they had been prepared for a long time, using the Ukrainian Nazi forces as a, as a ram. Their goal is to destroy the Russian economy and also to surround us with a cordon to turn us into an outcast country. Their methods are versatile from directly supporting Nazis. And Defense Secretary of the US, Austin, literally called for that yesterday, talking about the need to, to train the personnel to ensure the success of new offensive operations that are being prepared to unprecedented sanctions and flat out lies in their attempts to demonize Russia. All right, and we'll get one more little video. Uh, well, this is just propaganda, but uh, this this was um, this was wild. Uh, this will be the last. Well, this will be the last one. Um, this is this is pretty uh, intense. This is what fighting looks like. show the Russian propaganda and I uh, and I don't know I mean I, I'd, I'd like to think the Russians are treating all of the uh, Ukrainians who surrender okay um, anyway I, <clears throat> I haven't seen any evidence to otherwise have you seen any videos on uh, MSDNC or CBS or ABC or or uh, any of the uh, uh, Western propaganda channels uh, where Russians are torturing um, Ukrainians are killing them behind the lines. I haven't seen any of that, but this is this is just a POW from Ukraine that surrendered. Я солдат 72-й отдельно механизированных бригад из Белой Церкви. Я недавно попал в плен под Никольский. Если бы я не попал, то я был бы уже на том свете. Пацаны, меня не били. Отношения нормальные. Поэтому, если хотите остаться в живых, пожалуйста, лучше сдайтесь. Иначе будет тот фарш, который я видел по этим окопам. Поверьте мне, это очень страшно. That's it for today's video. Uh, peace out, stay free, and uh, it's good, 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 good to live in the free, free, free Republican state of Florida under the great leadership of Governor DeSanctimonious.